Oh. Okay. So, for those of you who watched my first vlog, you'll remember when I said this. And I guess I will see you in a couple weeks when I go to Scotland. Little did I know my life was about to be thrown for a whirlwind. So this gets a little complicated. Let's back this train up. As much as this is clickbait, it's also true. <laughs> but let's talk about the reason you actually clicked on this video, which will be the title. Yeah, uh, let's talk about how I was homeless for two months. Well, welcome back, finally. <laughs> I know it was a little bit longer than expected. First off, I just want to apologize. Second, I want to thank everyone for those of you who did reach out to me and ask when the next one was going to be posted. In order for this to make sense, I need to go back quite some time. So, as some of you may or may not know, I am in Pittsburgh this year for my senior year of college. This was not a personal choice. This was not something I was fond of. I do not like the idea of not finishing where I started. I love Edinburgh so much. I miss all of my friends there. I miss the sorority sisters. I miss knowing where everything is on campus. I miss a meal plan, which I never thought I'd hear those words come out of my mouth, but here we are. So my program, is a three-in-one, which means I do a year of externship off campus, at a different campus. I did not know this when I started my major, or I would have asked a lot more questions. Seems I'm already into my senior year, there's not much I can do unless I wanted to change my major completely. Which being this far in, I'm not really fond of that idea either. How does this all tie in to me being homeless? Oh, well, let me tell you. When we found out that I was going to be doing my senior year off campus, it was around January or February. My mom and I quickly started looking for apartments because everyone knows that you can't just look for a place to live the very last second. Like, you can't. It never works out. You end up being screwed, to be honest, because everything's either taken or there's nothing good left. With that said, my mom and I have never been to the Pittsburgh area. Because of that, we are extremely unfamiliar with this area. So when we were told that I was going to be in Pittsburgh this year, we both panicked a little bit. We were limited to what we found on the internet for apartments. And by that I mean we were limited to whatever we found that was close to CCAC, within our budget, and had a studio and or one bedroom for me. Now granted, I don't know if you've ever looked at a map of Pittsburgh, like and just pull up your Google Maps and look at Pittsburgh, but it looks huge, okay? It just does. With not, neither of us having ever been to Pittsburgh, we didn't know that it's actually a lot closer together than it looks on the map. Our number one ultimate top of the list filter goal, whatever, was to be close to CCAC. So there was one night where I was on the couch with my mom, we were just scrolling through all the different freaking apartment apps, and I stumbled upon what seemed to be something worth mentioning. So I did. I mentioned it to my mom. I said, hey, look at this place. Looks pretty freaking nice. We find out that not only does this place come furnished, and not only is it brand new, it has a washer and dryer in unit, the utilities come paid. All you're responsible for is your rent and finding a place to park, which in the city of Pittsburgh, you it's a parking garage or nothing, pretty much. So we said, hell yeah, sign us up. You know, the months go by, you kind of forget to keep tabs, I guess. We keep getting emails from them. After I've already paid, you know, my security deposit, we did the background checks. I paid my first month's rent up front. All of that. We started getting notices in the email about a construction addendum. And we said, you know, okay, whatever. My original move-in date was supposed to be August 17th. But this construction addendum wanted, wanted to push it back until like August 25th. 
So, I mean, we really weren't that upset about that. We were like, you know what, it's a week. Worst case, I'll pay to stay in a hotel for a couple days until I'm able to move in. This particular place, they were rebuilding this complex to be more student friendly. And they were really partnering with Point Park and Duquesne with like their students. So CCAC students weren't really like a thought only because it's not really smack dab like right in downtown. So because of that, they thought it was okay since Point Park and Duquesne didn't start school until the following week. Little did they know I started school that Monday. I couldn't be moving in on a Thursday or a Wednesday or whatever I happened to be while I was in school. There was not much they could do. I mean, the contractors got a little behind. It happens. They found a couple problems that they spent longer fixing than they thought they would. It's okay. You know, it's, they're humans. It happens. For that week or so, the complex was going to put us up in a hotel um, until the apartment was ready to move in. It really wasn't that big of a deal because as soon as the apartment was ready, I was just going to pack up the things I had in the hotel, push them down a block, and unpack again. Like, it really wasn't that big of a deal in my book. What was a big deal was the fact of how sneaky and conniving everything ended up being. And by that I mean, when I was in Scotland, which was at the end of July, I received two more emails from this said company, pretty much saying like, hey, move-in's getting pushed back even more, now it's not gonna be till like, September, and then a, hey, sorry, Movement's getting pushed back to like the middle of September now. And we said, are you kidding me? You actually have to be kidding me. Because now not only was I out the money that I had already, already footed for the first month's rent, the security deposit to pay to get all of my background checks done. And mind you, rent was $914 a month plus $250 a month for the parking garage. I mean, this place was nice. Don't get me wrong. The way they had it laid out, it, I was paying for 900, 920 square feet for a studio apartment in downtown Pittsburgh, which I know sounds insane, especially for a college student. But the longer I'm here, the more I have learned that it's probably one of the cheaper ends with everything that you get included. I was more pissed about the fact that I was going to be out all that money now. We were going to try to get out and find somewhere different maybe because that's just ridiculous. But, I mean, what are you going to do? So they offered to put us in a hotel. And they were going to put us in a hotel right up until we could move in to our place. When you walk into the lobby, you feel like you're in a five-star hotel. But once you get to your room, it's a very narrow hallway leading into the room, for starters. There's no lighting. There's one light when you first walk in the door, like a dome light at the top and then there's lights on the nightstand which you can't control by the way they're just dim all the time so you walk in you turn the lights on and you can't even still see and you turn the corner and there's literally no room for anything except the bed off to the corner is the bathroom mind you i was paying for a 920 square foot space i probably got stuck with something that was less than 300 square feet for everything let's look it up I'm going to go on that hotel's website right now and just see if I can find anything about the square footage for their rooms. Okay, well, I just found it right here. It says, um, a king-size bed, one of those rooms, is 395 square feet. Um... I didn't even have a king size bed. So please imagine how much less square footage I had. I was probably paying for around 210 square feet. I had no room to do anything. I feel like this whole vlog is just gonna be one jumble because I just keep rem remembering more like stuff that happened while I was there as I'm filming. Like I don't have any of this written down. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. So we get to this hotel and we move in and you know, we're pissed because we just wanted to move into my apartment. Little did we know how much of a cluster f it was going to turn out to be. <laughs> they tried to kiss our ass every time they know they f***ed up. They tried to give us laundry services since we no longer had our own washer and dryers, which we were banking on. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I know I need my scrubs and my uniforms washed pretty much that day. And they were offering to do our laundry once a week, which, you know, for whatever is standard. For someone in the healthcare field, 
If you run out of scrubs, you're kind of SOL because you can't rewear them. Can't rewear scrubs two days in a row without being disgusting. So that ended up coming up out of my pocket as well because I ended up having to drive to a laundromat every time I needed to wash my clothes. I know some part of someone watching this is gonna be like, oh my God, you get, you get to live in a hotel. Shut the f up. I would dream to live in a hotel. You have a maid that comes in, your laundry's done for you, you get free food, like what more could you want? Yeah, okay, I said the same exact thing before I was actually living it. I kid you not, my garbage wasn't being taken care of. My towels weren't being replaced as they were being taken. I know this sounds so petty because I'm a 21 year old and like I can take care of myself. But when I'm put in a situation where I physically can't just like go to my linen closet and get another towel or like pick up my garbage, take it out and take it out to the dumpster outside. Like when I'm physically not able to do those things, the major thing that I was pissed about, we weren't allowed to have microwaves, mini fridges, anything in our room. We had no way of having like a little kitchenette area. We had no way of making our own food unless it was snacks like chips which you just pull off the shelf i was told at move-in by the lady that was running the student affairs part of it that and i quote yeah you're probably gonna have to eat out a lot it's probably gonna get a little bit expensive but you know what that gives you a chance to go out and tour the city and get some knowledge of the area okay lady well are you gonna be paying for my meals every day because let me tell you something if you you don't realize how expensive eating out every night is until you have to do it. And sometimes that includes eating lunch and dinner out because you have no way of having anything prepared for you to like bring to class with you. It was the most stressful situation a student that's trying to be focusing on their work could ever be in. Because not only do you not know where you are, you're put in a place where you're pretty much fending for yourself you're not allowed to have your own food. You're not allowed to wash your own sheets. You're not allowed to have your own towels. You're not allowed to do anything. And mind you, like I thought living in a hotel would be dope. Maybe just not this one. I don't know. But we found a loophole in my contract. So we got our final email from them. And this just kind of set it over the edge for us. We received our final email from them saying that construction was still going to partake until at minimum, October 6th and that wasn't even a guaranteed move-in date that was just saying they were still gonna be working on it up until At least October 6th So we called the girl that we've been dealing with and asked her what was going on and we asked her we said if this is a guaranteed move-in date We're okay with it, but if it's not Y'all need to get your Together because you're about to lose your tenant So she said she could not guarantee that that was gonna be a move-in date So my mom took a furlough at work Came down helped find places for me to live Help find loopholes in my contract with my old complex. Got me out, got me into a new place, moved everything down in a U-Haul. I am just now settling in and I've been in Pittsburgh for the better part of two and a half going on three months now. I'm still not settled into this house quite yet. It's a townhouse, I'm very happy with it. It's more expensive, but I don't have to pay for parking. It's a two bedroom. I turned the second bedroom into my study, which is where I'm at right now. You can actually see behind me a little bit that I still have some totes that I don't even have unpacked. That whole closet is full of totes, which I'm just kind of like avoiding at this point in my life. On top of that, I have work. I have homework. I have exams. I have other things to be doing. I have to focus on clinical. I, what really grinded my gears about this whole complex situation was that they didn't even act like they cared that students had other shit going on in their lives. They expected everyone to drop everything when they said to fit their demand. And mind you, they were nice about the situation at first, and then they started getting snottier with the more questions people asked. I had mentioned earlier that this complex was right around the corner from where I was staying in this hotel. You better bite your that I walked over to see the progress on this building almost every day. Every time I walked by, the workers were sitting either outside on the sidewalk or you could see them like inside on their phones just dilly-dallying. Or even worse, there was no one on the site altogether. So we actually reached out to the people at the complex about it 
And they pretty much called me out saying I was a liar and I didn't know what I was talking about. And don't you know, they have their offices set up in there already and they can hear them working all day every day. Well, that's a f***ing crock of because we were told in the beginning when I wanted to move in that we weren't allowed to even step into the building because it's an insurance hazard. No one except the workers are allowed in because nothing's done yet and they still had problems with the building that they had to fix structure-wise. I mean, I'm happy now that I'm out of that situation. Because mind you, I still had to pay rent the entire time I was in this hotel. So not only was I paying for a 900 square foot apartment, but I wasn't even getting a fraction of what I was paying for. And with rent, sorry, but I don't have $914 to just pull out of my ass every month for somewhere I'm not staying. The final icing on this cake was when we finally told them we were getting out of the contract because the construction addendum did have a loophole and that loophole was as followed. The construction addendum is no longer valid 30 days after the anticipated moving date. So they went past that, but I only had a three day window to give written notice and hand it in saying I was getting out of my contract. So thank God they had that loophole because if not, I'd probably still be stuck in a hotel in a 200 square foot room. All that was in that room were two nightstands, a bed, and a pathetic little armoire looking thing for your clothes. There was enough room to walk around the bed and that was it. And that kind of brings me to my final point, which is why my vlogs have been so late. My life has been very stressful dealing with this situation, trying to cope. It's been very stressful trying to think about where I'm going to live. It's been very stressful not having any room to do anything and having to eat, sleep, do homework, get do whatever you want on your free time, watch TV in the same spot day after day after day. And that place was on a very uncomfortable bed. Not only was it not right for me to vlog in that hotel, but it was very uncomfortable. I felt like I needed a space to be creative and I didn't even have space to breathe. So in conclusion, vlogs are to come. I'm sorry they ended up being so late. My life kind of got flipped upside down. Scotland vlogs are coming. I've already edited the majority of them. I just have to do my transitions now for them. I hope everything turns out to be okay and that everything's good from here on out. I'm sorry everything ended up the way it did vlog wise because I was really excited to share everything with you. I really got torn down when I, you have this image of something and the way it's going to be and then once reality hits it's not like that. That shakes you a little bit because I thought Pittsburgh was going to be a good experience for my education, for my vlogs. I thought I was going to be able to take more adventures but I wasn't able to do anything so far and the prime like activity season is now over because it's cold out. I'm sorry if this was like a bummer vlog. I really didn't intend for it to be. But when you're paying $914 to not get what you're paying for and to be just thrown in a shabby little room, it, it takes a toll on you. So I'm sorry that I just unloaded all of that on you, but I promised that an explanation would be coming and I promised that Scotland would be coming. I do have another vlog in between this one and the Scotland vlog that's coming out. I'm hoping this weekend. After that, I'm trying to get the part one of the Scotland footage up by sometime next week. But I'm not gonna bore you about it anymore. I want you guys to go out and have a great day or night or whatever time it is where you are watching this. I want you to have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Be on the lookout for those two vlogs upcoming. I don't even wanna like ask you to subscribe after this video because I feel like it was just such a Debbie Downer. But I'm a YouTuber so I guess like, that's kind of what you gotta do, right? Subscribe button's down there. Do me the favor of pressing that. I would be honored to have you as a subscriber. If you like this video and me rambling about how I didn't have a place to live for two months, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, so give it a thumbs up. In all seriousness though, thank you for sticking by me. Thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you for your support. Thank you for those who I did explain the situation to a little bit, who offered to help. Thank you to everyone across the board. All I can ask now is for your support here on out. I'm gonna really hope and try to promise that nothing of this severity will ever happen again to the point where it's gonna put off my vlogs for months. But 
like I said, there's some upcoming vlogs. So if you want to keep up with those, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me. And I will see you guys when I post my next video this weekend. I hope you guys have an awesome day. I love you so much. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.